mambo ya kusema ati i've been i, I cannot deliver because i was because i was i was ranked the last one you cannot compare mombasa with nairobi my brother governor joe he's doing his second term my brother uh, whom i respect a lot uh, governor nyangnyong he inherited a clean uh, government which has no corruption look at the government i've inherited yeah look at the rains and by the cause of these rains and floods look at what happened uh, in solai yeah even Nairobi we've tried if i can say we've tried but the rains kidogo seem to slow down what we are doing on the ground but, people but now as we are going senator why yes. did you not ensure the uh, at the county you later inherited as governor yes. was a conducive one yeah. to let you work no, serving I, as senator i have been raising all these matters in senate even at, at some point i almost went physical with kidero over misappropriation of on, on misappropriation of funds Good evening and welcome back to Checkpoint. Governor Mike Sonko then, an exclusive interview with our Timothy Ocheno. Um, yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday it was, and he talked about um, the issues in the state of Nairobi County and what he believes is the cause. He blamed the former government and also touching on uh, natural causes in terms of the floods. Joining me in studio tonight to talk about the state of Nairobi County on my immediate uh, right is uh, Onchari Oyeyo. He's a political advisor to Governor Sonko. Thank you for being with us tonight. Next to him is David Murade. He's a vice chair of the President's Party, the Jubilee Party. Thank you. And last but not least, Jonathan Mweke is a former deputy governor in Nairobi County. And I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Mweke. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Uh, governor Sonko, not only in that interview, but on several occasions, has pointed an accusing finger at the former administration led by the former uh, governor, Kidero, you, whom you deputized. What do you make of those assertions, that it's a total mess that he's trying to clean up that he inherited? Uh, if it was in his first 100 days, would be able to listen and uh, scrutinize the governor's comments mm -hmm. a little closely. But, Sophie, it's been eight months. You can't tell me the garbage that was dumped yesterday in Isili or last week on Juja Road that's not been collected was put there by Kidero. You really can't tell me that the potholes that have shown up on Tomboya Street mm -hmm. in the last three or four months were put there by Kidero. Mm -hmm. If there's any mess that was left in eight months, Governor Sonko, as the governor, our governor now in Nairobi, mm. really should have had a plan and should have begun fixing the mess. Yeah. So I think one of the major attributes of a leader, a good leader, really is about problem, problem solving and not, so you think and not finger pointing. Yeah, I think he's, he's, uh, he's finger pointing. Yeah. He needs to sit down, look at what the problems are that are facing the city, and then come up with a plan with his government and uh, the people who work in the county to address some of those issues. Right. Saying that this is cartels and saying that this is Kidero is not going to work because it can't happen for too long. Uh, and as I comment also on the cartels, if, if there are any cartels... Did you face them during your yes, turn? Yes, we faced cartels. Did you any, facilitate the cartels in, or did you fight no, the we, cartels? We fought the cartels. Uh, and but in clearly any, they're in, still there. In any organization, there's different kind of cartels that come up in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and in any organization, there are some people who don't mean good. Even in the private sector, even in national government, there's people who sabotage operations in organizations. Okay. The work of the leader is to make sure that you take care of those cartels mm -hmm. and not sit back and blame them. So the constitution, and indeed the people of Nairobi, gave Governor Sonko all the power and a full mandate to lead this city. All right. He has all the powers to fight these cartels. Okay. So my advice to the governor is stop blaming the cartels fight them and make sure they're eliminated so you can provide service to the Monaiji. Uh, Mr. Onchari, you advise the governor. Why not unmask these cartels? Why not tell Nairobians these are the people that are making it difficult for us to provide services? Well, thank you so much, Sophia. You know, I wish the advice uh, Mike has given us could have been applied during Kidero's time. The reason as to why the song has taken so much time to you know, un undo the mess Kidero created is because they didn't do anything to actually deal with the, cart the cartels. They assisted and facilitated. In fact, they created so many of them. The land cartels, 
the guys who supply to the, to the county, mm -hmm. the guys who are stealing money from the county. You see now we collect so much money up to around 1.6 billion in January. They were collecting hundreds of millions, like 200 a month. And the governor was the senator then, meant and to keep the busy, governor, keep, governor in check. Did he do he, that? He, he did it very well. We all know that. It's on, it's on, it was, it was. If he did it very well, it then that should open. have been dealt with. Every single day when Songo complained as senator about what Mweke and Kirero were doing, it was all over the news. It's documented. Now, um, there's a lot of dishonesty in what uh, Mwek has just said. Songo was sworn in, I think, towards the end of um, early September last year. Mm -hmm. From that time, of course, from that election, we went to the next election again. And Songo was very, very instrumental in the president's re uh, re repeat election campaign. In fact, he spent a very small amount of time in Nairobi. He was assisting the president in mobilizing votes and there. But is that why Nairobians elected him to campaign for the president no, no, or to serve him? The them? point is, Nairobi was the hotbed of post-election skirmishes and actually to sit down and put a government and start working was not easy. So if we can be honest enough, the only time, the only quiet time the governor has had to deliver is since the handshake. The president knows it, the party, the Jubilee party officials knows it, I mean know it, the Songo has not had sufficient time. It's now that you see after the handshake, there are no riots, there are no demonstrations. There is some kind of, you know, quietude. Okay. He has ample time to start delivering. Well, what, what and you something yes, else, he talked, he talked about Amboya Street. Yes. That is under Kenya Urban Road, Roads Authority. He knows it. That is not a county uh, road. So, well, you know, we spread rumors and lies, and that is why we're blaming the governor. If you can be honest, we can appreciate what he's done. So you argue he's simply not had time to work. What do you make of a governor chosen under the Jubilee Party ticket for which you're vice chair? Well, the reason we campaigned uh, to take Nairobi was in the hope that we could make a difference from the Kidero Mweke administration. So to start throwing tantrums, and to start the blame games is not good enough. Mm -hmm. I said the other day that even by appointing Miguna, for example, this was a distraction so that he can uh, forestall impeachment. Because the party has rules and it has a code of conduct mm -hmm. which everybody must adhere to. So I did not say we are impeaching. I said he's for stalling because he's quite clearly a candidate for impeachment. Why? He has totally failed. He, he runs this city on TV. He runs it on video. He has a network of bloggers who keep telling people what he's doing, how he's cleaning garbage, how he's doing the roads, and the problem is the same. Nairobians must feel it. You must feel yeah. that you're crossing Nairobi River. The last time Nairobi River was done was when Michuki that went down there. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping Tobago can do the same. The president and the government and the party has tried to support them by creating the Nairobi Regeneration Team. Mm -hmm. They feel that that team is fighting them. Namata, for example, the Nairobi Metropolitan Transport Authority. Right. It's supposed to create and decongest the city. You can have a tram like those ones of Dubai. You've been to Dubai, the metro. Mm -hmm. You just do a pillar and the train is uh, flying on top. Yeah. You can do one from the river, from Machakos, all the way to Kikuyu. Another one from Rongai, all the way to Kayole, to Ruai. Another one from Nairobi to Keno, Muranga. You know... All this can be done in nine months? Those are five <laughs> counties. No, at least start something. Let us start seeing something and support that. Already I'm told he's working well with the Minister for Housing mm -hmm. and uh, Infrastructure about housing. That required the intervention of the central government. And they're blowing a beautiful opportunity, these Nairobi people, because you're getting money from the national government over and above what you're collecting. You're collecting your rates, you're collecting your uh, parking, you're collecting, and you're getting money from the national government. All right. Well, and then you're getting a budget line. And then they say they don't want it. They go to court. I want us to listen to what the governor had in regards to this call you're making for his impeachment. Uh, let's listen to Governor Sonko. I don't fear any impeachment against me. It is the, uh, that is the mandate of the uh, county, any county assembly can impeach their boss. But for what mistakes? For what uh, mistakes have I committed? By appointing Miguna as the deputy governor? Let them go and read the constitution. The, 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 I'm empowered by the law to appoint Miguna as my deputy governor. But the guy you're talking about, even I want to mention his name, 
I don't know the deputy Jubilee. I don't want even to know him. Remember when we were campaigning, there are two people in government, one in Jubilee, the vice chair of Jubilee, the current PS internal security. These were the people who were even fighting me when I was campaigning. These are the people told the president and the CID that I should not be cleared for mistakes committed like 20 years ago, which were cleared by the court. I was declared uh, fit to vie for MPI, I vied and won. I vied for, for, for senatorial seat and won. But when, where were they all these years? When I was running for governorship, they came with all sorts of uh, uh, claims against uh, Sonko that I did not go to school, I did not do my form for, that I don't have a certificate of good conduct. Then at some point, the president intervened. He investigated and found all these were just allegations to divert my attention of, 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 of campaigning. Why is it the same people within government today fighting me, today calling for my impeachment? What have I done? I'm in office just, I can say, even for 29 days. I remember the first three months we went for the presidential rerun. After that, I had uh, an election petition at the High Court. I spent two months in court. After that, they also appealed against my, my when, when the High Court upheld my election, they appealed again for one and a half months. So those are like over, over, over six months. So I'm now in office for less than 29, uh, the 29 days. So, Mr. Vice Chair, the governor there front and center is putting you and P.S. Interior Kibisho as his detractors. He says you have a bond to pick with him even during the nominations, and that's what even these calls for impeachment are about. And those who support him say nine months, is that really fair to demand or require that he'd have delivered even for the president in his first term? When you present yourself for election, mm -hmm. you're telling people that you are familiar with the problems and that you are the solution. So, like uh, my friend here said, uh, 100 days is the standard that is used to check, even in America. Even here, people will pledge what I'll do within 100 days. Granted, he has been distracted here and there. But we were not, I was not convinced that he would make a good governor. And I went on record and I said it. He has himself said that he ran away from jail. Himself, by his own admission. So, how... Can somebody stand here, throw tantrums, and he has said, uh, I, I escaped from prison? He should actually be in prison. Because what kind of uh, standard are we setting here? Mm -hmm. That a guy can probably come and tell you that how he escaped from uh, prison, mm -hmm. and then you make him your governor? I, this is personal, by the way. It's my own personal opinion. Sonko is my friend. But the so way- What's the president's view on this? The, the president is the, the party? party leader. He tries to assist and to manage Sonko. Very few people can manage that guy. Sometimes him and his team, you don't know what they are smoking. Because you can deal with him one minute, he's very sober. The next minute, he's all overthrowing tantrums. We need something, we need consistency and in And yet you knew all these things before he was elected. We'll continue with that conversation, but Mwake, let me bring this to you, because the governor time, and again, as I said earlier, he keeps talking about the former administration. There are those who say Nairobi's problems are historical, but what would you seated here tonight as former deputy governor say Nairobians have to thank you for? Well, uh, several things. Number one, one mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll give you the three very quick things. Number one, digitization. You've seen even the current governor now uh, has been on record saying that the jumbo pay system that we put together is the one that's helping collect the 100 million shillings a day that my friend uh, Wakili Onchari is talking about. We put that system into place. We digitized Nairobi and ensured that people could even get their business permits within five minutes. It used to take three to four months to do that. The second thing we did is we put 19 out of our 85 clinics then into 24-hour mode. Uh, and put drugs in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So that delivered quite some services and decongested Kenyatta National Hospital. And the third uh, memorable thing that we did was the street lighting in Nairobi. You realize how much lighting that we put all over the city, in every corner of the city. We tripled the lights from 20,000 to 60,000 street lights in the city of Nairobi. And that enabled even the people who are doing business in the informal settlements and the Mamambogas and the Joakali guys mm -hmm. to do business up to midnight. And it kept the wheels of the economy uh, going. You've had the vice chair talk about housing. 
the housing project uh, which is here at Suna Road mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Governor Sonko will be launching soon was a project that was initiated by our administration. We mm -hmm. signed those contracts in our time. Uh, they just had a hitch with the PPP, public uh, private participation, public private uh, privatization uh, uh, um, organ at Treasury, and that's why it didn't get done. It was unlocked by the national government, and now Nairobians are going to get that low cost housing. But just so that I've had a uh, Wakili friend here saying that I'm, I'm tabling untruths, mm -hmm. if, if we can just be objective and ask ourselves, what does it take to have a functional city where people want to live, people want to work? Number one, you need order. You have to ensure that the laws are followed, the people who are doing business are doing business in the right places, the traffic management is good, so the matatus and the border borders are obeying the law. Mm -hmm. You have to ensure that there's good infrastructure, your roads are motorable. So let me jump in there, because one of the things yeah. uh, the Kidera administration had said would do is clear the garbage. Yes. Dandora. That hasn't happened. Yes. The drainage system, it's still a big problem today. Mm -hmm. Key issues, the rains, perennially we have them. It's not something we all get surprised by, but still unresolved. And we're still, it was one of the 100 days things Sonko promised to do, but still mm -hmm. were issues in that administration. So in that respect, you did not deliver for Kenyans. I can answer to those two questions. The Dandora problem, you know we signed a contract in 2014 mm. with a company called SEM from Germany to come and do waste collection in all of Nairobi and turn waste into energy. It was again a PPP. Now PPP is the way they work in this country and I don't think there's been even one successful one is it has to be approved by the PPP secretariat right. that sits under Engineer Kamawa, the treasury. We signed that contract in 2014 by the time we were getting to 2016, end of 2016 is when the Treasury was telling us that this PPP is not viable because the company that was selected could not meet its financial obligations. As we are speaking, that company even went to court because that contract was cancelled. So okay. that's what happened with that. So we tried to do something about it. Did we succeed? Absolutely not. All right. But we did try yeah. to do something about it. On the drainage systems, if you briefly. realize very briefly, we had major floods in 2013 and 2014, that South Sea was flooding, museum was flooding, forest road was flooding. We learned from those mistakes. We put a dedicated team to go and clean the drainages. And in the rains for 2015, 2016, and 2017, Nairobi did not flood. So why is so it what flooding broken now? broken down in 2018? The drainages are not being cleaned. They're not being cleaned. You say that's false? False. By the way, uh, the drainage system has been a problem ever since, I think, the 1970s, even before I was born. And the Muyaka Kidero uh, administration never did anything to rectify that. Now, I think the only... Hold on a second. South Sea used to flood. Did it flood in those three years I talked about? It didn't. At the Shell Kelelesho petrol station at Riverside used to flood. Did it flood? No. Forest Road used to flood. It didn't used to flood. Why did it not used to flood after it flooded in the first two years with us in, in government? It's because we did something about it. So, you're so let's saying call a spade a spade, a spade and not just point fingers for the sake of it. As you talk about that not being true and justified, 100 days, uh, Governor Sonko promised you know, reduction of traffic. Mm -hmm. We still are choking in that. Water shortage, there's water rationing currently ongoing in Nairobi County. Poor housing, organized the hawkers, sanitation, all those remain to be challenges. And the bigger concern, even with the help now of the national government, they gave a 30 day timeline to deliver on no garbage piles, clean uh, Nairobi River, that to commence, traffic management committee. They have failed on their 30 day, which uh, deadline that expired on the 13th of May, and even promised the president they'd resign if they don't meet this. So even with help from the national government, the promises you're making to Nairobians are not being met through the governor. Now, there's a difference between where we have partnership with the national government and the commitments we've made to Nairobians as a county government. Mm -hmm. Now, I think uh, maybe for the sake of our listeners, I'd like to clarify a couple of things. Uh, the governor is very committed to working with the national government. And uh, contrary to what uh, uh, David said, mm -hmm. um, the governor is very, very consistent, is very, very reliable. And with the limited politics that are totally unnecessary, I think it can deliver. Actually, it's done so much. Like we talked about revenue collection. Up to now, there's no time you've had uh, county employees complaining of uh, delayed payment of salaries. During the day of time, it was a monthly kind of what? Mess. You could see riots every single month. You're not seeing that now. By the 24th of every month, mm -hmm. guys are paid. 
So that is because of the increase in what revenue collection. And then he talked about he talked about Zambo Pay, which of course again they assisted to put in place. But then they never used it to collect money during the time. Only 14 revenue streams were part of the process. Sonko has taken it too. Uh, how is it an achievement? Fine, you're collecting more money, you're paying salaries, but what, to what end? What now, are they doing that we can say we are paying them for one, two, three? Now, we're collecting this money, where is it going? Now, after the money, after, okay, when we collect like 1.6 billion in a month, okay, let's say half of it goes to salaries. The remaining half goes to funding projects like construction of roads, collection of garbage, which you're seeing. Even when the national government does not send any money to the county government, guys can be paid and some projects can be you've funded. You've mentioned collection of garbage. The governor said you've currently suspended the contracts of the garbage collectors in the city. So who's collecting garbage? Uh, now, not every contractor has been suspended. He said all of them not have all been of suspended. Them. Yeah, and then, the, of course, Mwek is going to tell you the county collects garbage in its own right. They, they, it has trucks and they, every single day you can see them moving. For your information, there were some roads within Nairobi which were permanent dumping sites, sites during the Mweke Kidero, the Kidero Mweke regime. Five years, like Moilen. You, it was covered by the nation the other day and described as one of the, you know, evidences of Sonko's lack of performance. Sonko came in and collected all that trash which was there for like five years and took it to Dandora. Now there is construction that is going, ongoing. We need to be honest. And when it comes to, you know, meddling by some outsiders, not real outsiders, <coughs> but because the... Um, the, the, some members of the national government, some members of the party, the, that is the governor's party. They need to work together. What Songo is asking for is not, um, you know, uh, unnecessary or too much support. He wants to be given time to deliver. He talked about lack of time. He's not had time. If he's given time, he can work, and he's, he's done it before. Yeah. When he talked about uh, being harassed, you know, during the nomination process, remember, he was cleared to run for member of parliament. He, he was cleared to run for Senate. Okay. So why were hurdles placed along his path when he wanted to become governor? You can see some uh, sinister you know, moves there. That is why he's complaining. So the same, same people who tried to block him from vying have followed him all the way. All they have to do is to let him work. It's very simple. We will hear more on it's that uh, from the vice chair on mm. are you stopping the governor from working. Uh, when we return, we'll hear from him as well as what the president uh, had to say uh, on Nairobi County. Please stay with us and keep your thoughts coming at Sophia Wanuna hashtag checkpoint.